In this video, we're gonna go through the very basics of DAX functions, specifically how you can read and write your own DAX functions if you know nothing about them. We're gonna break down the anatomy of a DAX function step by step. I'm also going to show you how to read and consume the documentation in order to use some more complex DAX calculations. All of that and more, so without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So you're probably watching this video because you want to start working with DAX functions, but you're a little bit intimidated with the syntax of the DAX functions and you don't know where to start. And if you're not familiar with coding at all, don't worry, we're gonna cover it from the very beginning. To get started, I've created this very simple Power BI report here, which is just one table, the orders table. And I've also created a measure here, which has a DAX function, a very simple one, which just sums up the uh, quantities for all the orders. Uh, within our orders table. As you can see, we have the measure that I've created selected on the right hand side here, which brings up the formula bar. This is where the DAX functions will be written. So to show you what this measure does, let's bring this into our report here and let's make it as a card. As I said, it just sums up the quantity of all the orders in our orders table. If we select the measure from the fields window here, it will bring up the formula bar, which is where you'll typically write your DAX functions. So let's break down this syntax step by step. So the first thing that you need to define with the DAX measure that we've created here is the name. So you can name it whatever you want, but in this case, we've decided to name it total quantity. The next thing that you need to write is the equals. So the equals signifies the end of the name of your column or your measure. And the next, everything that you write on the right hand side of the equals is what's going to be evaluated for your DAX function. So the next thing, once you've decided the name of your measure is the equals. Anything after the equals is your DAX calculation. So the next thing, as I said, is your DAX calculation. Now, in this case, we can see that we have just one DAX function here, which is called sum. You'll be able to identify a function through two things. So first is the color of the writing. So you can see that it says, uh, where it says sum, you can see that the color is blue. That means it's a function. So the next thing is that functions have an open and close parenthesis where you can add parameters to them. So you can see here we have uh, wrapped an open and close, close parenthesis within something here, which is the quantity. So think of DAX functions more like commands. So you send the command, you give them some value, and it returns the value back to you. So the simplest analogy I can give you is like ordering a sandwich from Subway. When you order your sandwich, that's the DAX function or that's the command. And when you receive your sandwich, that's the value that the function returns. So in our case, because we're using the sum function, we're basically saying, hey, I want you to sum up something for me. Uh, in this case, I want you to sum up the quantity column and I want you to return the value back to me so I can use it in my measure here. So as I said with functions they have an open and close parenthesis and inside these parentheses you can add uh, parameters which you can pass to the function in order for it to work. So again going back to that analogy of ordering a subway sandwich parameters are more like when you're asking what kind of toppings you want with your sandwich, what type of bread you want. Uh, these are the type of parameters we use for functions here in Power BI. And in this case, we're using sum because it's very simple. It only requires one parameter and it only requires a column, which uh, you need to specify which column you want to sum up. Different functions have different requirements of parameters that they need in order to work, but we'll go through them one by one. When you're referring to columns using DAX, you need to specify what the column name is and which table it lives in because you typically will have multiple tables and multiple columns within your Power BI report. Here you see that we have the column name quantity enclosed in square brackets and right next to it is the name of the table that it lives in. So it lives in the orders table and it's called quantity. To get more context over what the sum function does, we refer to the documentation here for the sum which has some information pretty useful for you. So it gives you the syntax of how you should write sum. Uh, we talked about the parameter, which is what it needs. So as I said, we need to define the column of what we want. It gives you the return. So what type of return value it gives back to you, some remarks. 
and also how an example of using the sum looks like which is really important now there are tons of functions within dax and while i remember the most common ones that i use on a daily basis uh, most of the time i use the documentation for reference as they sort of follow the same principles. Power BI makes it even easier to refer to documentations through suggestions and autofills as you type your functions. So let me show you how to do that. So if we go back to our example here, and let's say we want to create a DAX function that divides the costs by the quantity, um, we can create a new measure here. So as I said before, we're gonna start by naming our measure. So we're gonna name this cost per unit. I'm gonna write equals. And here's where we're gonna write our DAX calculation. So now instead of creating a new measure, let's create a new column instead which uh, we can use DAX functions on. So let's create a new column right here. We'll start with the name. So we'll name this one cost per unit and equals. And then we're gonna write our DAX calculation right here. So with the divide, we wanna divide the quantity by the cost. Now, let's say for example, we don't know how to use the divide function. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna just start typing divide here and let's see what we get. So as I type divide here, you can see that Power BI suggests me the available DAX functions that I can use. And it gives a bit of description as to what the function does and what parameter it needs for it to work. If we want to autofill the DAX function, we just hit the tab here, which will create us an open parenthesis for us to start adding the parameters. So now with this function, you can see that unlike the sum function, the divide function requires three things. It requires the numerator, the denominator, and an alternative results. Also pay attention that the numerator is highlighted. That means that whatever you type now is going to be counted as the numerator parameter and you can separate the parameters uh, by adding a comma in between. So for the numerator, we want to use the quantity column. So we're going to just start typing quantity. And you can see that Power BI once again uh, creates some suggestions for you to use uh, in this specific parameter. Now, as I said, for DAX calculations, when you're referring to columns, they need to show the column and the, the table that the column belongs to. So in this case, it's the quantity within the orders table. And a quick tip to distinguish what you're choosing is look at the icons themselves. So you can see this table icon means that you're selecting a column within a table. You can see the calculator icon, which is a measure. And if I just uh, delete a couple of steps, you can see the FX icon that means those are expressions or functions now from these suggestions we can use the up and down arrow keys to select what we want so we want the orders uh, the quantity column in the orders table and we'll hit tab to autofill it for us so we don't even have to write the whole thing by ourselves it just uh, autofills for us without any trouble now the denominator is highlighted it means that any value we put in here will be treated as the denominator part parameter for this divide function that we're writing. So we're gonna just create a space here. And from here, we're gonna use the cost column. So again, we're gonna start typing costs and then hit tab to autofill the whole syntax. Now it's asking for a third parameter alternate result, but pay attention to how different it is to the first and second parameters. It has square brackets uh, enclosing it. A parameter with a square bracket like this means that it's an optional parameter, which means that you can uh, use the function um, without having this parameter at all. So we can just give the divide function the numerator and denominator without specifying the alternate results. So let's ignore this third parameter for now and let's close up this function here and let's hit enter. Now you'll see that we have the new calculated function, calculated column here on the right hand side, cost per unit. And if we drag this to our table right here, so you'll see that you have now the cost per unit, which divides the quantity against the cost. So let's have a quick look at the documentation here and let's see what it says to us about the divide function. So it's gonna type divide here. And here we can see some more information about the divide function. So it gives us the uh, syntax exactly what we see over at the Power BI autofill. It asks for three parameters, the numerator, the denominator, and you can see the alternate results, which is optional, as I said. It returns a decimal value 
and you can see a couple of different examples of how you can use the divide. And here you can see an example of when it's using the third parameter, the alternate result, which basically returns one if the numbers in the numerator and the denominator are non-divisible. DEX functions can either return a single value or a table of values, depending on what the return remarks is. So pay attention to that when you're looking at the documentation. So for example, I'm gonna look for a different DAX function here called select columns. So as you can see the description here, it says it adds calculated columns to the given table or table expression. And you can see the syntax here, it looks quite scary, but we'll go through it step by step together. It asks for three parameters. It asks for a table parameter first, then it asks for a name and then an expression. And pay attention to the return here. It says it returns a table with the same number of rows as the table specified as the first argument. So if you use this function the same way that we use the other functions like creating a measure or a calculated column, it will fail. And let me show you why. So let's create a new calculated column once again. And let's name this one um, select columns. And we'll type our function here, select columns. So again, it gives us some suggestions. So it's asking for table, uh, which in this case is the orders table. So we'll just start typing orders here. Uh, I'm gonna hit tab to autofill, comma. So now it's asking for a name and an expression. This is basically the columns that you want to specify in your DAX table. So let's say we wanna bring in just the product's name. So we'll name this column product name and the expression within this column is just give me the product name from the orders table. And we'll close it for now and we'll go through the different variations of this in a second. So we'll hit enter. You will see that it says to you a table of multiple values was applied where a single value was expected. So that's because you're basically putting a tabled value within a single value column or measure, which um, it's not valid. So because the select columns returns a table, uh, we can't use it as a measure or a calculated column, but we can use it to create a virtual table. So let's go to insert or modeling and let's create a new table here and let's write the same thing so let's say a uh, new table we'll name it new table and we'll type select columns we'll do the same thing we'll give it orders comma we'll say for the first column is the product name and by the way the double quotes and the color which is the red color it means that it's a text that we're entering here we hit comma the expression uh, is, again, we want to use the product name and we'll close this function for now and hit enter. Now let's go to the data view here and you can see on our new table here, this is what the DAX uh, column has created. So all it does is it goes to the orders table and it gives us this new column, the product name. Break it down, you'll see that the first column that we've created product name, we put the name here, and the expression is basically what we want to include in that column. So what you've probably noticed when we looked at the documentation for the select columns, and if we go back to it, is you can see this square bracket uh, followed by a dot, dot, dot. Now, as I mentioned before, the square brackets means it's optional, and the dot, dot, dot just basically means that you can add as many of this optional thing as possible. So what it's saying to us is that uh, at a minimum, it requires three parameters, but you can also add more parameters if you want. So essentially, if you want to use the select columns, you can add as many columns as you want uh, just by adding name and expression um, combination. So let's try that. So let's go back here to our select column and we're gonna go inside this close parenthesis here. Um, we're gonna add comma and you can see now the name to an expression too. They have the uh, square brackets. That means that they're optional. So we're gonna add also the unit price. I'm gonna name this one unit price. I'm gonna add the comma and we're gonna type unit price as the value. Same thing with the quantity. If you've noticed already, when functions ask for expression, we typically just add the column names. 
But these expressions means that you can add some arithmetic or some calculations behind it um, in order to fill it in. Now, let's say, for example, in this case, we want to uh, create or calculate the total sales by multiplying the unit price by the quantity. Now, uh, we can create that as a new column. So I'm going to create a new column here. And let's name this one sales, total sales. And for our expression here, instead of uh, just typing the column name, we're going to add, we're going to say quantity multiplied by unit price. So we're using the asterisk as the arithmetic, but you can use uh, slash plus minus to do some basic calculations. If you hit enter, you'll see that now we have on this table the total sales which multiplies the quantity by the unit price. So it's that simple. And that's really it for this video. I hope this video helped you understand how easy it is to get started with writing your own DAX expressions if you don't know any coding in the first place. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comments below so I can help you and you can help others. If you enjoyed this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.